It's eight o'clock. Athens International Radio, 104.4 FM. Good evening, Athens. It's 8 p.m. on Tuesday, July 27, 2004, and you are listening to Athens International Radio on 104.4 FM. I'm Tom Alexopoulos. And I'm Themistiopoulos. On this day in 1824, world-famous French writer Alexandre Dumas is born. In 1940, Bugs Bunny first appears on the silver screen in a wild hair. A wisecracking rabbit had evolved through several earlier short films. In 1980, Mohammad Reza Pahlavi, the former Shah of Iran, dies of cancer while in exile in Egypt. In 1992, the famous Greek actress Jenny Karezi passes away. In 1996, in Atlanta, Georgia, the 26th Summer Olympiad is disrupted by the explosion of a nail-laden pipe bomb in Centennial Olympic Park. The bombing which occurred during a free concert killed a mother who had brought her daughter to hear the rock music and injured more than a hundred others, including a Turkish cameraman who suffered a fatal heart attack after the blast. And finally, in 2003, famous actor Bob Hope dies at the age of 100. And we'll have more on sports, what's going on in Athens, and a whole lot more. But first, here are the headlines that are making news at this hour. Olympic Games security umbrella operational today. Athens mayor meets development minister to iron out final details for Athens during games. Paramedics, doctors, and hotel staff striking for Olympic bonus. Traffic disrupted because of Olympic lanes. Hot and humid in Athens, rains elsewhere. The Athens Olympic security umbrella, including dozens of armed Patriot defense missiles and hundreds of surveillance cameras, began operating today. Almost 300 closed-circuit cameras are sweeping main avenues and squares. Three police choppers and a high-tech surveillance zeppelin hover above the capital around the clock. Dozens of new Pac-3 Patriot Advanced Capability missiles are armed and in position at three locations around the capital. This includes the Tatoi military base near the Athletes Olympic Village. Army officials at the base said that the Patriot defense missiles are locked into their launchers and are ready to use against any potential threat from the air. Security forces also received 11 state-of-the-art surveillance vans, which will receive and monitor images from around the city. The Coast Guard will position six of them around the port of Piraeus to protect seven luxury ships to be used as hotels during the Games. Greece is putting in place the most expensive Olympic security plan ever, worth more than 1.4 billion euros at this time. By the August 13th opening ceremony, Greek authorities will deploy more than 70,000 security staff and thousands of cameras to secure the Summer Games. The C4I security system, which has cost in the region of a quarter of a billion euros, comes into operation today, 17 days before the start of the Olympic Games. C4I is an integrated system of control centers that will enable police, fire department, coast guard, and other security services to be linked in their bid to ensure safe games. The system includes cameras on the roads, the Skyship 600, and a satellite communication system. Greece has set up a seven-nation security advisory group, including France, Germany, Israel, Spain, the U.S., Britain, and Australia, to provide intelligence and training, and has called on NATO for air and sea patrols. But the government has assured that there was no indication or intelligence chatter or potential attack in Greece during the games, a statement backed by the international police organization Interpol. Quote, I'm not aware of anything like this, government spokesman Thodoris Zuzopoulos said, after a story in the New York Times suggested Greece was concerned Muslim militants in the country could prepare for a strike during the games. Today, the mayor of Athens, Dora Bakoyani, met with Development Minister Dimitris Shufas, power company president Yanis Paliokrasas, and other officials 
for final coordination between city and government organizations for the improvement of Athens's image. After the meeting, the mayor stated that the purpose of the meeting was to expedite all those processes that would make the Athens image as we wish it to be during the Olympic Games. Ms. Bakoyani added that emphasis would be placed on fixing wrongs, but also on showing concern for the citizens of Athens. The hotel staff trade union in Athens has called on its members to go on strike August 4th. They are demanding higher wages and warn that they will push on with their strike during Greece's Olympic Games. Union members are demanding a guaranteed minimum basic salary of 1,100 euros per month compared to their current net salary of 487 euros. The union is also pressing for a more stable employment condition for its workers who are often taken on a seasonal basis and do not receive any social security benefits. Athens faces a further series of strikes as doctors, emergency workers, hotel workers and are all demanding bonus payments for the Olympic period. In the first of the strikes, emergency aid and ambulance service staff stopped work for four hours between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. today, demanding the bonus payment for the Olympics. A six-hour work freeze by state hospital doctors in Athens and Piraeus is scheduled for tomorrow. Only emergency cases will be treated. The doctors will be on strike between 11 a.m. and 5 p.m. Also, doctors at the Esclipion Hospital in Vula will continue a three-hour work freeze daily. They are demanding back payment for emergency shifts they have worked. Meanwhile, Greek Railway Organization staff has announced, has announced excuse me, work freezes for Friday, Saturday, and Monday. They are demanding that more personnel be hired. The Hellenic Association of Tourist and Travel Agents, otherwise known as HATA, threatened to proceed with legal action against the Athens 2004 Olympic Games Organizing Committee. HATA contends that Athens 2004, instead of cooperating with local agents, made deals with a U.S. tourist agency that sold tourist packages that offered hotel rooms at prices inflated by 30% and tickets for the games inflated by 300%. A novel exhibition of artistic, of artistic works is being presented at the Athens International Airport in cooperation with Smile of a Child organization. The works exhibited are the products of the more than 8,000 children that have spent time at the airport's Children's Creative Activities area during the last two years it has been in operation. The exhibition fe features 70 works made by children between the ages of 6 and 13. It is hosted at the arrival deck of the airport under the thematic name the drawings of children from the world over unite us. A ship carrying about 60 illegal immigrants was discovered in international waters northeast of the island of Evia by the Greek Coast Guard. The ship, which is of unknown nationality, was spotted by a patrolling Coast Guard vessel, which immediately called the Merchant Marine Operations Center. Another four Coast Guard vessels were dispatched to the scene and are shadowing the unidentified ship. If the vessel attempts to enter Greek territorial waters, the Coast Guard ships will stop it. In a related incident, 25 illegal immigrants, nine children among them, are held in the northeastern Aegean island of Chios. They were located in the early morning hours in sea aboard a wooden boat. According to their statements, they are Afghans trying to make their way to Greece from Turkey. A solar electrical unit was inaugurated today at the Greek German School of Athens next to the Olympic Stadium by Development Minister Dimitris Schufas and German Minister of Labor and Economy Retzo Schlausch and other Greek and German officials. During his speech, Mr. Schufas lauded Greek-German cooperation in the energy sector and referred to measures being taken by his ministry to promote renewable energy sources such as solar power systems. The minister also referred to the simplification of procedures for licensing such units in order to make it easier to build them. He also stated that the ministry was looking into the provision of licenses for very small solar energy units for single buildings and homes. Just 17 days before the opening ceremony of the Athens Olympic Games, Greece is still being slammed in the international news media. In the editorial section of the International Herald Tribune, writer Nicholas Cage is supportive of the Herculean efforts made by Greece to host successful and safe games. According to the editorial, Athens is not being given a fair shake. The Greek capital has been slammed in the international news media in a way that no other Olympics hosts ever were. The editorial says that for more than a year now, self-appointed doomsayers and armchair Cassandras have been predicting total disaster for the Athens Olympic Games. The report continues that Athens has been judged and found wanting before the Games have even started. But it underlines that the fact that Greece is a small nation, and it is the smallest nation ever to hold the Summer Olympics, and it is one with the fewest financial resources. 
The International Herald Tribune says that despite all that, the venues have been completed. It also points out that the Greek capital will offer something no other city ever provided, and that is the spirit of place. Finally, it urges all Americans and all other nations to cut Greece a little slack, and at least for a short time remaining before the games begin. Athens International Radio, 104.4 FM. You're listening to the news. A United Airlines jet carrying 246 passengers that took off from Sydney at 10 a.m. Athens time was forced to return to Sydney 90 minutes later after a suspicious object was found on board the aircraft. Security was stepped up at NATO's military command headquarters in Brussels over the weekend after an Interpol report of a threatened terrorist attack. According to a report last night by the French news agency AFP, meanwhile, Belgium's RTL television reported that the four alleged Islamic terrorists who had planned the attack on NATO headquarters were from Greece. The French Associated Press stated that in its latest update that the information of the attack came from a Greek compulsive liar who told his story to Italian police. The state of, le- the, uh, the state of alert at the NATO headquarters was downgraded yesterday. Australia's Olympic team doctor has given a blunt assessment of how quickly victims might have to act in the unlikely event of a biological terrorist attack in Athens. If you're still alive 30 seconds later, you're probably all right. If not, you don't need my advice, said Professor Peter Fricker. Head for the showers, get it off your skin as quickly as possible. Professor Fricker has considered scenarios including use of the toxin agent ricin and the Nerf gas serin, which was used in the 1995 Tokyo subway attack, as well as terrorist quote, dropping a bucket of anthrax over the opening ceremony. Heavy rain and thunderstorms have swept through mainland Greece and the Ionian Sea today, as the National Weather Forecast Service warned. Local administration authorities are on a red alert in order to deal with any emergency situations. A project to protect wildlife is underway in the Drama area within the framework of a relevant EU directive and under the auspices of the Nature 2000-2006 network. The project aim is protecting endangered wild carnivores such as wolves and bears. Because such animals have caused damage to local farmers, a joint decision by the Ministers of Agriculture, Economy and the Interior has been passed providing for reimbursement to those farmers. The degree also provides for special subsidies for beekeepers in order to install electrical fences and for shepherds to buy sheepdogs. A fast-spreading computer worm disrupted the world's most popular online search sites yesterday, scanning vast databases of Google Incorporated and other search engines to find the email addresses of new victims. The online attack marked the evolution of a worm called My Doom that infected hundreds of thousands of computers earlier this year. In the current variant, MyDoom not only scans the hard drives of victims for email addresses, but also turns to online search sites to find additional leads. Alarm bells sounded at the English Football Association today as a media frenzy over managers Sven Gore and Ericsson descended into a near forest. The Swede away on holiday was nowhere to be seen, just like FA Chief Executive Mark Palios, who was expected to address a briefing at the central London headquarters of English soccer's ruling body. The FA was forced to admit over the weekend that both Ericsson and Palios had had a relationship with an FA secretary, contradicting a previous denial. Journalists arriving at Soho Square were informed that Palios, despite being present in the building, would not now be attending the briefing, called to discuss the less juicy topic of the FA's new fast-track disciplinary code. Greek national football forward Angelos Karisteas was awarded by his club Werder Bremen for its success in the Euro 2004. He also stated he is going to be a major option for this year's lineup. Panathinaikos football club won the Slovenian club Bela Kraina 1-0 in a friendly match yesterday. The Greek national basketball team beat their counterpart Brazilian side 105-61 during the opening game of the Acropolis tournament yesterday. And now, let's have a look at the closing of the European stock markets. In Athens, the general price index closed at 2,353 points, up by 1.8%. In London, the FTSE 100 closed at 4,313. In Frankfurt, the DAX 30 was up by 1.27% to close at 3,800. 
and Paris the CAC 40 closed at 3,558, up by 0.71%. And today's foreign exchange rates for buying euros, U.S. dollar 1.21, pound sterling 0.66, Japanese yen 134, Swiss franc 1.54, Canadian dollar 1.61, and Australian dollar 1.72. And now, let's take a look at traffic conditions around the city at this hour. Traffic on QPCS Avenue is free-flowing. Traffic jams, though, are reported on Halakopoulos Street leading up to Mesogion Avenue. Traffic is at a standstill on Alexandras and Vasilis Sofias Avenues heading north. Traffic disruptions will continue in the central Athens and other parts of Attica over the next 15 days. Crews are working from 10 at night through 6 a.m. daily. For those heading to Paleofalio and Piraeus, try Sigru Avenue. Kukis Plagadia's Metro Line, Blue Metro Line Station opens tomorrow. Rainy weather is expected throughout most of Greece through Wednesday. Athens will be hot and humid with highs reaching 33 degrees Celsius. That's 91.4 Fahrenheit. The skies will turn cloudy at times with light to moderate winds. In Salonika, the highs will reach 28 degrees Celsius, that's 82.4 Fahrenheit, with partly cloudy skies turning cloudy. There is also a probability of some local showers. And finally, in the Aegean Islands and the Tedakonis, the highs will reach 33 degrees Celsius, that's 91.4 Fahrenheit. The skies in the north will turn cloudy and rain is expected. And finally, South African police are hunting a gang of large or maybe big-boned women thieves who raid stores threatening staff with knives and steal mostly small-sized clothing. When they enter the store, they do so in a large group and they intimidate the staff, said Police Inspector Reed. The Durban City Police believe they have arrested most of the gang of 10 to 15 women. They're quite large people, Reed added. He also said that the gang stole a range of merchandise from the department stores, including perfume and clothes, and appeared to be stealing for resale by street hawkers rather than for personal use. You're tuned in to Athens International Radio, 104.4 FM. Athens may not have a mosque yet, but it will at least finally have its very own Islamic museum. It is part of the Benaki Museum located on Piraeus Street. Prime Minister and Culture Minister Kostas Karamalis will be doing the honors by opening the museum tomorrow morning. Yason Anastitiadis has more. It's been a long time coming. Many years of careful restoration later, Athens can boast an Islamic museum that rivals some of the finest collections of Middle Eastern art in the world. Anna Balian is one of the curators. It's a, a museum entirely dedicated to Islamic art, and there are no such museums, uh, in, in other museums like that in, in Greece, or in fact in uh, southeastern uh, Europe. We want to stress that it's dedicated, it's a museum dedicated to Islamic art. There, there are no such other museums. It points to the new way we are looking to, to cultures and civilizations. Uh, it's uh, a window to the, to the east, a window to the west. Uh, we want to show uh, Greeks and foreigners who visit this museum uh, that uh, Greece is uh, in between the Islamic and the Western world and it's part of the, the one and part of the other. Housed in two restored neoclassical houses in Athens' gentrifying Metaxurgio district, the new Islamic museum is situated in the midst of thriving immigrant neighborhoods, many of whose residents are Muslim. Among the 8,000-piece collection, there is everything from a towering 8th-century Mesopotamian door, a reed mat from 10th-century Tiberias, a famous 16th-century velvet saddle from Bursa, and the bronze astrolabe of Ahmed ibn al-Saraj, a famous Arab astrologer. Greece has traditionally had excellent relations with the Arab world, mostly built on a thriving bilateral trade across the eastern Mediterranean. The Benaki Museum's collection is very much a product of this complementary relationship. That it was put together by Andonis Benakis, the scion of a wealthy Greek trading family living in early 20th century Alexandria, is not by chance. I want to make this, this museum uh, appeal to, to Greeks. 
big society until very recently it was a very close society, close to itself. But now things have changed. I find young people who are very much interested. The Islamic Museum in Athens is um, cultural and uh, political in a way. Political indeed. In the age of the clash of civilizations, an Islamic museum can rapidly become a bridge across troubled waters. The Islamic Museum is being inaugurated this week by Greek Prime Minister Kostas Karamanlis. That was Iason Athanasiadis with that report. A plan of the Ministry of Public Order regarding the Olympic Games security was put into full action early this morning. Among other things, the plan included a wide number of scenarios dealing with terrorist attacks and other emergency situations and involves a great number of people. Our reporter, Maria Cagelidu, gave us all the latest details as she spoke to Barney Spender earlier today. There is actually over 19,000 policemen and 10,000 soldiers taking part in the operation, as well as firemen, Coast Guard personnel and other forces. Altogether, almost 70,000 people will be working to ensure the games are conducted securely and safely. The security forces have an exhaustive list of possible terrorist attack and emergency situation scenarios, over 200 at last count. Um, they also have thousands of surveillance cameras and the infamous Zeppelin patrolling the skies of Athens. All this electronic and other information is collected and processed by electronic security system called um, C4I. The nerve center of the security and traffic operations is located at the General Security Building on Alexandra Avenue and was yesterday inspected by the Minister for Public Order, Mr. Vulgarakis. All right. Now, there, there have been reports, uh, we've, we've noticed a couple of reports in the Herald Tribune, New York Times this week, about security, and, and one of them has been uh, a, a report that there is probably a dangerous Islamic sleeper cell in Athens. What's the Greek government's response been to this? Well, the government denied that there is any truth uh, in these reports, uh, and yesterday, so there is Rosopoulos, the uh, Greek government spokesman, repeated that they had no information that such cells exist here in Athens, while the General Secretary of Interpol, Ronald Noble, stated that the agency has no information referring to possible terrorist threats in Athens and added that the, all the necessary security measures for the Olympics have been taken. Right. Now, uh, uh, just, just looking forward, uh, Australia, uh, they, they seem to be in the news with regard to making comments about uh, security at the Olympic Games. And I, I noticed that a statement was made today by the President of the Australian Olympic Committee, John Coates, concerning security measures. What, what was all that about, Maria? Well, yeah, Australian press reports and official statements regarding security for the Athens Games have consistently embarrassed the Greek government. Well, today, the head of the Australian Olympic Committee expressed his satisfaction with the planned security arrangement. He now says that he thinks it impossible that a terrorist attack will take place in Athens during the Games. However, while Mr. Coates was making um, his declarations, the Australian authorities uh, were taking action anticipating a terrorist attack or other emergency. For example, Australian athletes are now following special seminars on how to react in case of a biological warfare attack. That was our reporter, Maria Cagliari, who spoke to Barney Spender earlier today. Athens International Radio, 104.4 FM. A great deal has been written and said about the security measures for next month's Athens Olympics. But did you know that in the first modern Olympics held in the Greek capital in 1896, security was also an issue? Here's Lou Economopoulos with more on this story. Newspaper reports of the security arrangements for the first modern Olympic Games in 1896 had nothing but praise for the authorities. This is because they said despite the 120,000 Greek spectators and another 60,000 foreign visitors attending the Games, not one purse was stolen. We should explain that in the Athens Olympics of 1896, police were called on to guard just three sports venues, the Panathinaikos Stadium, the Velodrome, and the Pistol Shooting Range, a far cry from today's 35 venues. But there were difficult times in Greek history just before the turn of the 20th century with many reports of robberies, kidnapping of foreigners, and murders. The police force to guard the Athens Olympics of 1896 was 400 men, certainly much less than the 70,000 which had been called on to protect this year's event. The then chief of police was Pyrakpadis, who is said to have convinced the thieves that they should protect their country from rezili, meaning embarrassment, and they should refrain from criminal acts. There were only 262 athletes competing in the Games then, and all of them male. 
At the Panathinaikos Stadium, double checks were made with ticket holders who were directed to numbered seats. Parking of horse carriages and bicycles were prohibited in front of the stadium in order to allow space for spectators to enter. And spectators were ordered to enter the stadium before the events began, otherwise they were only allowed entry during intermission. It was forbidden for spectators to leave their assigned seats and to open umbrellas or other objects which might interfere with the view of the audience. It was also forbidden to shout insults and those caught would be immediately jailed. Beggars and handicapped persons were removed from the stadium area by police. While there seemed to be no complaints about the security arrangements for the Athens 1896 Olympics, there was criticism by foreigners about overpricing. The local press of the era wrote that some foreigners complained that for a cup of coffee a Greek paid 20 lipta, while a foreigner was charged 50 lipta. But wait, isn't today's Greek government also taking measures against profiteering? It seems times have not changed at all. That was Mr. Lou Economopoulos with that report. And now, a look at Olympic sports. Don't you just love the Americans? Just at a time when a bit of humility might not go amiss, along comes a young whippersnapper with a mouth the size of the Atlantic. His name? Carmelo Anthony. And he's on the basketball team. And he has, it seems, guaranteed the U.S. a gold medal in Athens. His somewhat boastful comments, however, are not symptomatic of an arrogant team. But it doesn't really help their coach, Larry Brown, in his bid to project a more modest image of his talented team. That's just a young kid saying that, said Brown, who leads the youngest squad at the Olympic tournament. But as long as he respects the people we're playing against and understand how good they've got, I don't have any problem with that. Anthony has said his comments are intended to add a competitive edge to the competition. And now, let's have a look at what's going on in Athens tonight and tomorrow night. The Lukavitos Festival 2004 features a performance dedicated to legendary Bob Fosse. A grand orchestra with 40 Broadway performers and a large theater group will entertain everyone. The show starts at 21.30 and will run for two more nights. Many have characterized artist Henry Moore as the last of the classics. The clarity of form and the sense of measure that runs through the whole of his work have been the elements that, among others, have kept art historians and critics busy during his long course. His, exp his exhibition runs until October 31st at the National Glyptothique of Athens. The National Gallery on Vasilis and Sophia's presents the Imperial Treasures of China, featuring over 200 objects owned by China's Grand Emperors from the period between 3000 B.C. and 1900 A.D. And, and For clubbing tonight, Corto Maltese Club is the place to be. The club is located in CD, and entrance is free. Well, in case you're headed for the island of Mykonos this weekend... John Digweed is on the decks at the Cavo Paradiso Club. Don't miss out. It's a hot club, and his hot show starts at 2400. Alkino Ioannidis performs his version of contemporary Greek music in a concert tonight at the Viaccio Theater in Piraeus. The concert bears the title For Art's Sake, and it begins at 2100. 
tickets are 15 euros each. And tomorrow night, July 28th, at the Memphis Club, right behind the Athens Hilton Hotel. They'll have a Pulp vs. James party with DJ Mario's Bosos on the decks. That show starts at 2300. That's all the time we have for this evening. We'll now take you to the BBC in London for the latest international new headlines. I'm Themis Liopoulos. And I'm Tom Alexopoulos. Kostadinas Matikas on sound. I'm Francis Lyne. Sudan says it will retaliate if foreign troops are sent to stop the conflict in its western province of Darfur. The Sudanese Foreign Minister, Mustafa Osman,